When we started changing our interpreter to object-oriented style, we introduced definitions like numv and closev, and these lists produced by uh, those functions, we thought of those as objects. So this list was one object, and, and when you call closev and get a, this kind of list, that was another object. Within those objects, we thought of these lambdas, these functions here, as being the methods of the object, which you could find by the name, and then the objects also had fields. Those were the arguments passed to numv or closev that could be referenced by these methods. For example, the number method of the object created by numv, uh, it would use the n field there. So we have all of these things. What are numv and closev themselves? We called them constructors, and they were constructors in the same sense that they were before with defined type, but they were also constructors of objects. Uh, and instead of writing constructors of objects this way, in, a, in an object-oriented language, often you write them in terms of classes instead. When you move to classes, uh, it turns out they can play two roles. One of them is this constructor role, uh, this object construction role, where uh, if you have a class snake, then you can use uh, new on snake and create many different instances of the snake class, many different objects that are instances. But there's a second role that's usually tied up with classes, which is implementation inheritance. So here we can define rattlesnake uh, extending snake, which means we can take advantage of some of the methods already written for snake, and we can refine them, replace them, reuse them as we uh, implement rattlesnake. So as we look at implementation inheritance and classes for that role, we'll have uh, two new features of the language to, to consider. The inheritance of methods, which is the reuse of method implementations in, a, uh, in an extending class, but also static method dispatch, which happens when the rattlesnake class here calls super to invoke one of the methods implemented in snake. Here's a concrete example. Uh, let's suppose we have snake implements animal and rattlesnake extends snake. Um, and let's suppose there is an endangers method, and rattlesnake refines the endangers method. But in the process of refining it, it also chains to that old implementation, that existing implementation in snake. So when we create a new rattlesnake, and we ask, uh, we call the endangers method on that rattlesnake, then of course it goes to the method that's defined in rattlesnake, and that has to be determined dynamically in the sense that A is just declared to be an animal, and so it's at runtime, we see that the animal runs a rattlesnake, and that is a dynamic dispatch to this method. Similarly, endangers takes just an animal, we don't know what kind, and so we ask whether it has a thick skin or not, that is a dynamic method call uh, to find uh, the method that applies to that object. On the other hand, super here, super.endangers, will always go to the implementation in snake. So that's a static call. We don't have to wait to runtime to see what the object is to know which method that will be invoked. And as we implement classes, then, we'll consider both dynamic and static calls.